we stand for the Easter procession. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. What we have done, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea.
Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of Son, by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the resurrection of our Lord is written in Isaiah, the 25th chapter. 
On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. From the dead, God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over. Yeah. 
1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, as of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me is not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The woman expect to find just about anything else than what they do see when they go to the tomb on this Easter morning. They wanted to give Jesus a good burial to anoint the body to follow up the work of Joseph and Nicodemus, who had worked the night before. They were expecting to find a very large stone covering the entrance, and they didn't have a plan on how to remove it because their hearts and minds were faithfully consumed with caring for their Lord's body. It's a wonderful thing, truly is, to give a loved one a good Christian burial, to care for the body with respect, to plant them in the ground with reverence and joy even while we mourn. That's what the Marys and Salome desire to do, and they run to the tomb before the sun had even risen, as soon as the Sabbath restrictions had ended. A Christian burial confesses the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. The Old Testament emphasizes the importance of laying the faithful with their fathers in the land and tombs of their fathers. Jesus is buried in a new and undefiled tomb, The bodies of Christians are buried in cemeteries, resting places to await the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Our burials are modeled after Jesus' own, with prayers, the remembrance of holy baptism, tears of sorrow and joy and care for the body. But most importantly, on this glorious Easter morning, we see the first fruits of the dead burst forth from that tomb after his burial. And we know that because he lives, we also will live. Our bodies, baptized into him, will share in his resurrection and be raised from those graves to walk, run, eat, drink, and live eternally with Christ and all his saints. The large stone is already rolled away. That certainly must have shocked the women. We almost get the image of a bad horror movie as they slowly peek their heads around the corner and into a tomb. But instead of horror, they find joy. Instead of shock, they can be at peace. The tomb, in fact, is not empty after all. There's a young man there, calmly sitting in the tomb on the side, and he is the first preacher of Jesus' resurrection. Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Imagine the flood of emotions and thoughts running through these women. This preaching doesn't right away silence their fears, interestingly enough. When they fled the tomb, they were trembling, and astonishment had seized them. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is often the case with the preaching of Christ. It doesn't always and immediately answer every single question we have. While we hope, certainly, that it can silence all of our fears, the fact is that our sinful flesh is weak and can be full of doubts. All this was unexpected for the women. Even though they had undoubtedly heard from Jesus' own lips or from his apostles that it was necessary for him to suffer many things, to be crucified by the chief priests and the scribes, and to be killed, to be buried, and on the third day rise again. Still many questions remain for them. Where is Jesus? What does he look like now? Has he really been raised from the dead? Can we trust the word of this entombed preacher just sitting here, and what will happen next to him and to us? We who often hear the preaching of Christ's death and resurrection still tend to have many questions, fears, or even doubts. Am I good enough for this salvation? Will I have my 20-year-old body or my 80-year-old one in the resurrection? Will I know my loved ones and recognize my family? And even in the back of our heads, sometimes we ask, is all of this actually true? Are the promises of Jesus true? Can I rest upon them? Easter, answer those questions in a simple way. Do not be afraid. Jesus is risen. He is not here. The tomb is open, but it's not empty. Hear the evangelist's comforting words. That's all you need. 
Do not be afraid. Jesus is alive. He is not here. The preaching of Christ crucified for your sins and raised from the dead for your justification is the solid foundation of your faith, that rock upon which we rest. Yes, that preaching is all you need, but you need it a lot, and you need it often, every week, every day, to sustain your faith in this life amidst the doubts we have. For although doubt tries to sow its seeds among us, faith comes by hearing the preached word of God, and this preaching has its center and focus, the events that just recently happened this weekend. Good Friday, Christ's cross, and a tomb from which he walked out. Jesus died for your sins. He was raised from the dead for your justification and for your life. St. Paul often reminded the churches to whom he wrote letters about this very gospel preaching. He encourages them and us this day to stand firm in and hold fast to these very words, because by them we are saved. This gospel is to be of first importance to us in our lives together as the body of Christ. Death has lost its, str- its, death has lost its sting. Christ is victorious. What can be more important than that? Jesus died for your sins in accordance with the Scriptures. He was buried, and he was raised up on the third day, as was written. And so you seek Jesus. Well, Jesus is here, even if he's not in the tomb. In the preaching of his gospel, in the waters of holy baptism, where he makes you his brother or sister on this altar, with his holy and precious body and blood in bread and wine given and shed for you to eat and drink. This is the feast of victory for our God, Right here before your eyes, worthy is Christ the Lamb who was, sa- who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Do not be afraid, Christ is alive, and this is his feast of God's peace. For the Lamb of God has taken away the sins of the world and grants us peace. Behold, the peace of the Lord held before your very eyes in this sacrament, and given into your mouths to strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace, our Lord says, not in fear and trembling, but in peace. For Jesus has risen, he is alive, and he refreshes you with this salutary meal to strengthen you in faith toward him and in fervent love toward one another. And as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, You proclaim the the Lord's death until he comes, and if his death, also his glorious resurrection from the dead. And so Mark tells us that the women left the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And still the gospel has gone into all the world, because not even fear can silence the word of Christ. Our hope is sure and certain. It rests upon our Lord's cross, a rolled away stone, the evangelists preaching and the promises of Jesus, that he is the resurrection and the life for you. So sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The Lord is your strength and your song, and he has become your salvation. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation, for the Lord has swallowed up death forever. His tomb is open, your grave will be also. The strife is over, the battle is done, now is the victor's triumph won, now the song of praise begun. Christ's victory is yours this day and every day, and all the vault of heaven resounds in praise of love that still abounds. Christ has triumphed, he is living. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Let us joyfully tell the world that our Redeemer lives. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Amen. We stand.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you kept your promise and delivered up your own Son to be our Savior. By his sacrificial death, our sins are forgiven, and by his rising again, we have the hope of everlasting life. Keep us in this holy joy throughout the Easter season and all our lives. Lord, your mercy. Be with Matthew, our Synod President, Richard, our District President, Shane, our Circuit Visitor, and all our pastors. Keep them faithful to, li- to deliver to your people the apostolic gospel of your son's death, burial, and resurrection. Lord, your mercy. Let us all hold fast to the word preached to us, that receiving it with joy we may take our stand in it and be saved. Hinder all who would sow doubt into our hearts and grant us courage to confess its truth in our life. Lord, your mercy. Bless Joseph, our president, and all who make and administer our laws. Frustrate the forces of evil and do not let our leaders cooperate with them or further their goals. Guard our armed forces as they stand watch for us at home and abroad. Let them serve with honor and integrity and keep them safe. Lord, your mercy. Have mercy on the sick and those in any need, especially Nancy, Dottie, Kelly, John, Alice, Gloria, Ryan, Lily, Brendan, Luke, Anna, Bob, Jim, Noah, Susie, Ryan, Joe, Carolyn, Mo, Carrie, Steve, Joanne, Jeanette, Deb, Jackson, Mary, Marvin, Kim, Bev, Joellen, Luke, Tammy, Rita, Ruth, Lyle, June, Caitlin, Julie, Jean, Deb, Claudia, Evelyn, Dawn, Maxine, Jordan, Eugene, Tom, Mike, Steve, and Jerry. Let the dawning light of the, of the new creation in Christ sustain them in faith. Lord, your mercy. Give us joy in your son's great victory feast as he shares it with us on this altar. In the eating of his true body and the drinking of his precious blood in faith, overcome our sin by his forgiveness and swallow up our death in his life, that we may be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Lord, your mercy. We join together in singing eternal alleluias with innumerable angels in festal gathering, with the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and with the fruits of the righteous made perfect. And we bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross, gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus. We beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. 
with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take drink, the blood of Christ shed for you. Take drink, the blood of Christ shed for you. Thank you. Welcome to our Lord's table. Take ye to the body of Christ given for you. Take ye to the body of Christ given for you. Take ye to the body of Christ given for you.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Standing for our recessional hymn, there are no announcements except Happy Easter and have a blessed Sunday, the day of the resurrection.